Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, giving diplomacy a chance to solve the Syria crisis, a somber 12th anniversary of America's 9-11 attacks. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry heading to Geneva to talk with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov all about Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's arsenal of chemical weapons. Russia says its proposal for securing Syria's chemical weapons was handed over to the U.S. The always kick line is at the White House with her report. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney told reporters Wednesday the negotiations will take some time. The process by which chemical weapons would be identified, verified, secured, and removed from Assad's control is obviously a complicated one, and that will be discussed uh, in Geneva and I'm sure in New York. While the Obama administration acknowledges that the process cannot be completed quickly, Carney says that is not an excuse for delay. Carney put pressure on Russia to continue moving the process forward. He said Russia is putting its prestige on the line. Kent Klein, VOA News. The White House. United Nations investigators say human rights violations are continuing in Syria. A UN Commission of Inquiry report on Syria describes relentless shelling and sieges, widespread torture, executions, and rape. UN Refugee Agency says more than two million people have left Syria since the conflict began in 2011 with more than 4 million others displaced within the country. Twin car bombings killed at least six Egyptian soldiers and wounded 17 other people on Wednesday in northern Sinai, where violence by Islamist militants has surged. The blast targeted a military intelligence building and an army checkpoint in the town of Rafa on the border with the Palestinian-populated Gaza Strip. No one has claimed responsibility, but the army blames Islamist militants. Americans gathered to mark the anniversary of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks on Wednesday. Those attacks killed almost 3,000 people. BOA's Pam Dawkins has details on remembrances in New York. With music and prayers, friends and loved ones remembered those who perished when hijacked planes hit the towers of New York's World Trade Center. They gathered at the site for what has become an annual event, the reading of the names of the victims. Christy A. Adamo, Terrence Edward Adderley Jr. For some readers, emotions were still raw 12 years after the attacks. You were more than just my daddy. You were my best friend. And I love you more than anything. You'll be in my heart always. Pam Dawkins, VOA News, Washington. President Obama observed a moment of silence at the White House at a time the first jetliner crashed into New York. He later joined family members of the more than 100 people killed when a jetliner struck the U.S. military headquarters at the Pentagon. It is an honor to be with you here again to remember the tragedy of 12 Septembers ago to honor the greatness of all who responded and to stand with those who still grieve and to provide them some measure of comfort once more. In Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the names of those who perished when United Airlines Flight 93 crashed, killed 33 passengers and seven crew, the names of those were all read. A New Delhi judge says four Indian men found guilty of the fatal assault and gang rape of a young woman last December will be sentenced on Friday. All four men were found guilty on 11 charges, including gang rape and murder, after the rape and fatal assault of a 23-year-old woman with an iron bar on a bus last December. North and South Korea have agreed to reopen a jointly run industrial park just inside the North Korean border on a trial basis. 
They'll start that on Monday. More than 120 South Korean businesses use Kaesong to manufacture a variety of products with cheap North Korean labor. In turn, the industrial park serves to provide vital foreign currency to the impoverished North. Number of billionaires in China rose to more than 300 in the last year for the first time. A Beijing-based publication says there are now 315 billionaires in the country. Biggest source of wealth on this year's list was the real estate industry, where prices have recently soared. And scientists have found a vast underground water reserve in the Kenyan region of Turkana, which borders Uganda, South Sudan, and Ethiopia, one of the country's driest areas. Get more at voanews.com.